We are going to be judging Tatfluencers tattoos today. These are professional tat getters. They make content talking about tattoos, but they aren't actually tattooers. And I want to go through and talk about their tattoos. Let's jump into it. Okay, the first one we got, we got Just Inked. He has a YouTube channel. He also posts amazing and unique tattoos on his Instagram. Okay, let's talk about this first one on his arm. It's a tiger head or just like the face. And honestly, straight up, I love this tattoo. Very clean very solid. And unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of the majority of this dude's tattoos. So this one is like a nice refresher. And I really love the way this sits on his arm. I mean, who doesn't love a giant ass tiger on a forearm? I think it just looks nice and solid. And with this tattoo, we see a lot of space. Like there's a huge difference between the darks and the light. And I think that in the tattoos I'm gonna be showing next, we don't see a lot of that. The contrast here really helps you to see the entire image. And it just like so clear to me, it looks very nice. Let's talk about his left arm, I believe. He's got a clock with a dove and some statues and some filigree. Honestly, like it's a pretty okay tattoo. I'm not a huge fan of filigree. A lot of the times I think it gets kind of messy in a tattoo, especially these like light black and gray images. I know that they were working around this already existing cross. So, you know, you can't do too much because of that. You know, this is one of those sleeves you see, you're like, cool. A lot of this tattoo just ends up looking muddy because of the filigree, but overall a very nice tattoo. We have that clock. Everyone loves a clock tattoo. Most of it is, is pretty nice. Again, not a huge fan of it myself, but that doesn't really matter in this instance. Still a good tattoo. You know, like I'm not a huge fan of like Greek statue tattoos in the first place. So gonna be hard judging that one anyways. On to the next. Okay, his right arm, I actually do really like. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of statue type tattooing, but this one feels a lot cleaner to me. I can see everything really easily instead of having to like kind of like search and search. I could see everything. The faces look very nice. And we even have like some statue building stuff at the bottom. It looks great, super cool. This is when we start to get to a place that I'm like, not a huge fan. First off, I want to say the part in the center, I think is very experimental. And I don't think when you see this guy walking around in real life, you see that skull very well. I think it makes a great photo. I think as a tattoo and like the artistry of it, totally fine, super nice, makes a great tattoo. But when you actually see that healed in the next, I don't know, five years, I don't think you're gonna see that skull very well. And why that is, is because one, you could barely see that in the image right now. And as tattoos heal, all this like light grays, the white they're using, all these things kind of fade enough. I don't think that this is gonna be a very easily red tattoo. This stuff with all the color and like the churchy feel, I love it. I like it a lot. Had they not put the skull in, I'd be like, that is such a unique, interesting tattoo. I can get down with it. But it's this. And this kind of leads me to where we will be with the majority of tatfluencers is that I think they pick tattooers who have like the most amount of follows and likes rather than who does the best tattoo for the long term. And I, I get it. Like if you don't have enough experience with what tattoos look like, you end up making mistakes like getting tattoos that look great on Instagram, but don't look great in real life. And it's crazy because a lot of these tattoos I'm sure cost a pretty fucking penny. But hey, I still like the arms. It's just this part. And I even like the way they connected it all. I like how cut off it is right at the collar. Super cool, interesting tattoo. Okay, on to his next. Okay, first off, let's talk about his hands. Now, we're gonna talk about his hands in a few different places, but okay, first off, he's promoting wearing gloves in a car. Look, if you have to baby your tattoos so much that you can't even expose them to a little bit of sunlight, I don't know. I'm always like, that's too much. But nonetheless, let's talk about his hands. I don't know what they are. And I know that this isn't the great photo of the skull, but I will show you later another image. And I think that this really takes home this like, sometimes tattooers who make amazing pieces of art for Instagram, the final results are kind of lacking. And like, this is a good example. Like you see this tattoos on his hands and you're like, what are they? I like know because 
of the chest tattoo that it's like kind of a cathedral look on the hand, but honestly, it could be a snowflake. It could be a spider web. Who knows exactly what they are? And the skull, like again, we're seeing so many light grays and some, a lot of white being used to really show the tattoo, but we know that those colors don't last. So it's like, really great tattooing for the photos, but not really great in real life. And like, I know that those hands cost a ton of money. So it bums me out a little bit to see that they're not like holding up very well. And especially in contrast to that sick tiger we were talking about earlier and how strong it is. Look, over textured, over detailed tattoos, a lot of the times a problem. You know, you looked at that tiger and you're like, that's, this tiger's this big and they use so much space and they use so much contrast and that tattoo just looks so rock solid. And then this hand, the, the spider web cathedral hand is like so dense and they put so much detail and they put so much black around it that it's almost impossible to actually see what it is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about his back because the same problems I saw with the hands we see on the back. Keep in mind, there's a big difference between a great artist and a great tattooer. And I think the greatest tattooers are both. You need to be an amazing artist, but you also need to put in to consideration like what we're doing and how it's gonna last in real life. And like, I look at his back and I'm like, fuck, it's so cool. But it only looks that cool, I feel like, when you see it in these Instagram photos and when you see it in real life and healed, you're like, it's almost a blackout tattoo. You know, which is fine. Like if you wanna black out your whole back, I think that's cool. But I don't necessarily think that that's what you wanted, especially if you're spending fucking hours and hours getting these like crazy details done on your back. I think this looks overdone. And maybe I could be wrong and maybe it looks fucking perfect in real life, but I'm gonna guess that in real life, a lot of those details aren't really there. And they only show up when you have the nice camera and the good lighting and a good dark room to film it in. And this is one of the biggest problems with like the tatfluencer economy is that I feel like a lot of times they promote tattooers who will sacrifice the longevity of a tattoo for the Instagram photo. As far as like tattooing goes, I think that it's more important to just make a good long lasting tattoo than it is to be so creative and to be get like such a great photo for Instagram. <sighs> I hope this tattoo looks better in real life than I assume it does after like the years and years of experience of seeing tattoos like this done. But the hands, I don't think the hands look good. Okay, on to the next. We got Trackle Tats, Triacle Tats. I don't know how to pronounce that. If anyone actually does, I'd be blown away. This is a, another YouTuber. I gotta be honest with you guys, I like her a lot. She talks a lot of shit about companies and tattooing that I think is problematic. She made a video about Black Dot, the robot tattoo machine. And I've also seen her do stuff on other gimmicky shit. So big ups to her. That doesn't mean we don't get to talk about her tattoos. Let's talk about her rose. I think you guys know I'm gonna like that the most. But let's talk about this blackout sleeve. I had to do a little bit of research. I found out that's actually a blackout cover-up type tattoo situation. So I won't be so harsh on it, but every single thing I said about the previous back and hand tattoos, we could say and apply to her blackout sleeve. The big difference is that that sleeve's a cover-up. So I'm way okay with that in comparison to it being tattooed on a fresh skin. And if that's like the blackout cover-up you come to terms with, like, hey, that's fine. Personally, I think there's other ways to black out a sleeve that would, are more interesting. Maybe doing like a Japanese blackout finger wave thing or a Japanese wind bar stuff. Like I think that's more interesting than a bunch of flowers that are so overdone, but to each their own, especially when you're covering something up, you just gotta run with what you got. Not a huge fan of the blackout, but hey, it's something. Let's talk about her palm, look. This is exactly what you want palm tattoos to look like. I know a lot of you guys at home are like, hey, palm tattoos never look good. That's exactly what a palm tattoo is supposed to look like. So if you're ever considering getting a palm tattoo and you're not sure whether to do it or not, remember this and this are amazingly healed palm tattoos. And realistically, they don't look amazing. So if that's something that you're concerned with and you want these like perfect flawless tattoos, you're not gonna get it on the palm. Sometimes they blow out, sometimes they fall out. The best you can hope for is somewhere in between. And that is a very nice one. 
done by Luke Ashley, great tattooer and does a lot of palms. So he knows what he's doing. Okay, let's talk about her hands some more. Obviously, I like that rose. Again, I'm gonna say that. But the other one, not a fan of. I don't think you're surprised, right? Like it's a overdone black and gray type of tat. I wish there was more space in between. So when they went through and they did this like liner type of shading, that's what we're seeing that like those gray rake marks in the actual center of the rose. I wish they would have used a lighter gray because it looks like they were using something close to like a 50 to 70% gray, which is too black for this, especially with the entire black arm. I wish they would have, but they're covering up what they got to cover up so they can't make it too light. I'm just not a huge fan of the way this tattoo is drawn either, but that's like really not, not a big deal to me. Again, when we're talking about blackout stuff, cover up stuff, what are we complaining about? It's better than what they originally had. So let's move on. Let's look at this tratty alien thing. You guys know me, I do trad stuff all the time. This is a super bold, gnarly tattoo. I do bold, gnarly tattoos. This might even be on the higher spectrum of what I think a bold, tratty tat should look like. Also, I've probably done stuff like this with bigger needles too. So can't be too mad about it, but a lot of this stuff, I get concerned with the alien eyes touching the alien head. I think it's a cat, alien cat thing. Yeah, the eyes touching the head, I think is a possibility. And that's something I'd be concerned about if I was tattooing something like this, but who cares? The tattoo is really nicely done in there. The color is really saturated. I'm never a huge fan of that polka dot look that's so popular these days, but whatever. On to our next. This is the first knee tattoo, and I gotta be honest, I almost always discourage people from getting knee tattoos because I don't think they look very good. This knee rose, phenomenal. So clean, so strong. The bat, on the other hand, not my favorite. But you're gonna be hard pressed to get me stoked about any bat ever. I don't really like them very much. But that knee rose executed super well, and I'm just in general stoked about it. I will say, I want you to take a look at the lettering right above it because look how clean and solid that is. And then I want to show you this super bold, tratty style lettering, I think it's lackluster. It's missing something. And I, dude, I've said it in the past, I hate doing letters. If you were to ask me to do some letters on a bold tratty tat, you're gonna get letters like this, and I don't think they look very good. <laughs> so, but yeah, let's also talk about this moth on her chest. I love that tattoo. It's very nice, very clean. If you guys don't know already, that's what I like in a tattoo. I want you to be able to walk down the street and someone be able to check that thing out and know exactly what they're looking at. And in contrast, we see that blackout arm and we don't really see that, right? Like they could walk by and you might be like, I think I know what that is, but you also could be like, I have no fucking clue. That's okay because it's a blackout cover up, but just something to keep in mind. Like this moth, so clean, done in a very similar style, but they actually gave everything a lot more space, a lot more room to breathe. They actually used the skin tone as a color. Okay, there's black, gray, then they put a little bit of white, and then they use the skin to actually work as a different tone. Like you're seeing that, you're picking it up. Very nice, very legible. I like that a lot. On to the next Tatfluencer. We just passed 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And if you don't mind liking and subscribing so we could hit our next goal of 25,000 subs. Appreciate it. Okay, this is Inked Abroad. First off, I wanna say I really like his torso. It's like a travel party tat. I'm into it. Just put stuff where it goes, stick it on to remember the places you've gone. It looks like there's all these different, like I see a little bit of what I would imagine is some sort of Slavic lettering. I see some, what looks like Greek and I like it. Little travel tats, I'm into it. If you guys don't know, I own and operate a tattoo shop in Mexico. So people be getting travel tats here every single day. We do Day of the Dead shit. We do tacos, we do tequila, we do some other stuff, but it's mostly party travel tats. And I get down on that. Anyone spreading the message of like traveling and getting tattooed, I'm cool with. But let's look at some of the other stuff. Okay, he's got some tratty things. Look, you guys know me, you know my history. I love traditional tattoos. And I either am super in love with it or I'm like super meh 
it's okay. It's fine. It's just like a good tattoo and there's not much else to it. That's kind of how I feel with that skull that says like Latvija. I'm going to guess that that's Latvia. Latvia, but I don't know how to pronounce it in Latvian, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that skull. It's kind of boring to me, but let's look at this knee bat blaster. I told you, I don't like knee tattoos. And this is not the exception. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't think putting a massive amount of purple over a knee makes a great tattoo. That's just personally how I feel about it. Like I know that there's these spaceships going around the knee, which is kind of okay. It's an interesting design choice. And if I was a tattooer, I would have been like, yeah, sure, we could do that, but we don't have to. We could do anything else that would look a lot better. We could put this on the back of a calf and make it a cooler tattoo than we could on the knee. I know people get obsessed with tattooing their knees these days. I've got a lot of buddies who make me put shit on their knees and I'm always like, can't we just do like a black skull, like a simple, stupid black skull and tattoo so much shit around it that you don't even realize that it's a knee tattoo instead of doing these like knee pad look things, they always kind of just not a big fan of them. Every time I see someone walking around with a knee tattoo, I'm like, meh, not my favorite. But hey, that's more a personal preference. And it's also personal preference. I don't like the purple on it. So this dude writes in his bio, here are the world's greatest tattoos. You guys know I'm a tratty daddy. If I saw these traditional tattoos, I'd be like, they're, they're very nice. They're very nice, they're very clean, but far from the world's greatest traditional tattoos. That kind of like is something I think a lot about when I see these tatfluencers who have like these, usually they're like the shorts and they're like, look at how amazing this tattooer is. And I go, yeah, they're okay, but I wanna see some healed tattoos from these people. I don't think that that's actually like the world's greatest tattooer. I think it's just like a good tattooer or a lot of the times really good photographer who has a ton of subscribers. So you want to post something talking about them so they'll repost you. And then mutually you get more followers together because of this like, I posted you, you posted me, we get more followers. Just being honest, I know how the internet works. That seems like kind of what we're seeing with these tatfluencers a lot of the time. It's not really about educating people on tattooing as much as it is like trying to grow as big of an audience as possible. But on to the next. First off, I think we all know, y'all know, I know, we all know. I don't like biomech. You're a normal human being. You probably don't like biomech. But this especially does not look like good biomech. Maybe you guys in the comments are like, no, that's a perfect tattoo. And what I see when I see this tattoo is a very well executed photo shoot. Because this tattoo in real life, I don't think it's gonna look very good. I just don't. Look, there is actually some biomech I like out there. It exists. There's a bunch of dudes who I like their biomech shit. This isn't particularly it. This very like earthy bone type of shit always kind of drives me nuts. And I think a lot of you guys can agree, we don't like it. Either way, let's talk about like those toe bangers. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that all that white you put into that tattoo going onto the toes, which is extremely painful, is faded. <laughs> By the time we're filming this, I guarantee most of that white is non-existent. If it is, then it's not gonna last very long. And a lot of this tattoo is reliant on white. It just is. A lot of those bones, you can see they put a lot of white so that they could get this like, you know, popping out appeal thing. And you're like, okay, great. But tattoos will change and those light grays and those whites will fade. So what tattoo are we left with? And does this tattoo actually look good when you're not taking like a, you know, a gnarly photo shoot to get it there? Cause it just looks bad. And I think that this is just a good moment to be like, what is a good tattoo? Cause to me, a good tattoo is a tattoo that looks good for a long time. Not a tattoo that looks good for an Instagram post. That's how I feel about it. When I see this tattoo, all I see is a tattoo that if you weren't in a film studio or a tattoo shop that's like, you know, really dedicated to having good lights and stuff like that, tattoo is mediocre. Okay, this is like that healed a little bit. That's a healed photo or a healing photo. I think we all know that that doesn't look great. And I think a lot of that white and a lot of that detail already gone. 
There you go. That's kind of what I'm talking about. But on to the next. Let's talk about his hand because his hand drives me absolutely crazy. Not to mention that like the forearm is so lightly tattooed that you can't even tell what it is. And remember, this is an expert. This is a person who is telling people who the greatest tattooers are. If that's the tattoos that you have, I just don't know about it. I just don't know about it. So look at this hand. Look, first off, if you're doing some fine line bullshit, don't put it over your knuckle. But also, if you're doing like a spaceship that's supposed to be like perfectly straight, also, don't put that over your fucking knuckle. Like, I just want you to look at the spaceship, be like, okay, the spaceship is like this big, right? It's pretty small. And then the rest of the hand is just blacked out. That's not a good use of the space. And any tattooer should have been like, no, let's not do it like that. It just doesn't look good. And then like, look at this. He's rubbing some ointment on it that's supposed to make the tattoo look good. That tattoo does not look good. There's nothing you can do to tell me that that tattoo looks good. Watch him rub that stuff on it. It just looks like it's etched in and barely there. But it leads us to one of my last real critiques of tap fluencers. And it is, like anything else, being a tap fluencer is a business. And a lot of times they sell you products or they're selling someone else's products, like in this case, Mad Rabbit. And I don't think that they should be. I just don't. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be making money talking about tattoos. I got no problem with that. But they should do it with like the principle of like, hey, we are here to make tattooing a better place, not necessarily to get the most views and the most likes on Instagram. And there's a big difference between what a good tattoo is in real life and what a good tattoo is in a photo. Because a lot of times we see these like thousand dollar tattoos that are like this big and they're like right here and they fade away and they look like shit. And you're like, why was that a thousand dollars? And it's like, well, because you got it posted on the internet and it got half a million likes or whatever. And this is probably what happened with this hand tattoo. It was a bad idea, a bad placement, and it shouldn't have been done, but the tattooer did it. These are the people who are in charge of promoting another product that tattoo clients don't really need. Like another fucking ointment company? Like how many ointment companies do we need out here, boys and girls? I just don't think that many. And if they are, maybe they should tattoo her own with people who actually care about what the business is. I don't know Mad Rabbit, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess they're not tattooer owned. And I'm gonna guess that the people who are making the most money from Mad Rabbit aren't tattooers. So why are they in the business? What do they actually understand about tattooing? How to market? That's it. How to market a product and give their product to other tap influencers who don't know much about it, but they built an audience based off of like showing some other tattooers. I just don't get down with it. I find it really exhausting and boring and I don't hear enough tattooers or people saying, hey, why is that happening? And I get it because like at the end of the day, a lot of you guys would be like, oh, you're just a grouchy tattooer. And I'm like, maybe that's okay. Okay, and this leads us to our last tatfluencer. Before you guys leave it in the comments, I know that she is becoming a tattooer, which makes me so happy. If any of these tatfluencers become tattooers, I'd be stoked, just straight up. I don't have any problem with any of these people. I just have problems with some of the like tactics they use sometimes. And in a lot of the cases, I don't actually have that feeling. It's just some of them. So let's talk about Cell. She's got some of what I think are honestly the more boring tattoos we see, and they look so so good. Like she ain't getting fancy. She ain't putting a spaceship on her hand. She's just putting a nice little peony. And dudes, it looks great. It looks nice and solid. She put in peonies and snakes on her knees. I've already said, I don't like knee tattoos, but hers look great. Sometimes the most boring tattoos are the best tattoos. The moth on her stomach, killer. The other knee looks great too, like just simple, clean tattooing, which I get down with. This is someone to me who is picking high quality tattoos and understands what a tattoo is supposed to be. A beautiful, long lasting piece of art, not an amazing Instagram post or an amazing Instagram tattooer. That's it. Clean tattoos, solid tattoos. Good for you, Cell. Like I said, some of the most boring tattoos, but by far the best. And just an overall solid collection. Even this black and gray Sacred Heart, I love it. I get down with it. Dude, if you're gonna be a tap fluencer, get the best tattoos you can. 
That's who I trust to be telling me what a good tattoo is and isn't, especially since their whole job is to get tattooed, essentially. That's like this core essence of the thing. You know, like the core essence of my job, do tattoos. The core essence of a tatfluencer, get good tattoos. And a lot of times, subpar at best. Honestly, I will say I was going through a lot of tatfluencers and there was a handful that I just couldn't even discuss because their tattoos were so bad. Those ones actually made me very angry because it was like, you have two sleeves, three sleeves, and they all look awful. There you have it. I appreciate you being here. I hope you learned some things or you didn't. Appreciate you anyways. See you in a few days.